We're here again with the 6600 launch from AMD. Well, it's a 6600 another edition of the card. Well, this one's the one without the XT, right? But wait, 6600. It's it's basically the same. It's it's the same. Hello. Well, I mean, basically the user experience is the same. I mean. Okay, the numbers are slightly different, but I mean, what you're gonna experience in the game is basically the same. <laughs> all right, fine. Yeah, no, it's, 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 all right, all right, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> It's not the 6600 XT. It's the 6600. They're the same. Okay, they're not the same. And I'll get angry letters about their being the same. The specifications on paper are actually a little bit different. A little bit less compute units, a little bit less speed, a little bit less clocks. But subjectively, the performance that you're going to experience as a gamer in most situations is so close that the 6600 is probably going to be the better buy versus the 6600 XT. It's the Spider-Man meme. Which one? What's which one? What? Which one? What? It's they're the same, except this case, you know, both of these are actually Spider-Man. Both of these are actually sort of ridiculous cards. The 6600 is also an insane 1080p graphics card. When we're talking about 1080p gaming, we're not talking about 1080p 60. We're talking about 1080p 120 or 100 or at least 90. And the difference between the 6600 XT and the 6600, on paper, it's about 10%, give or take. The 6600 XT really squeezes things out as much as possible from the silicon. The 6600, no doubt, is silicon that just couldn't live up to the clocks or other performance characteristics of the 6600 XT, so it gets down bend, and it's just an user pricing of $350. In these times, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to buy it for that. You certainly can't buy the 6600 XT for end user pricing. Although AMD did do a reasonably okay job keeping the price as low as possible. It was like 50 to 75 dollars over MSRP until recently, and then the price kind of spiked. I don't know what that means for the future of GPU prices going forward. I do love Power Color's box though, and how they put this together and their specific card. So this is the Power Color 6600. Look familiar? It looks identical to the 6600 XT. We still got eight PCI Express 4.0 lanes, which don't worry, that's not going to bottleneck. And then you know it comes in an anti-static bag. I've just I've just repacked it. And then this, the Power Color Quick Installation Guide. It's on the internet. Just this. I like this. This is a good strategy for reducing waste. It's got a single eight pin power connector. It's got a triple heat pipe heat sink because this thing is not gonna run hot. It's not gonna use an insane amount of electricity. I would have loved it if they could have done this with 75 watts so that you wouldn't necessarily need the external power connector, which is great for those low cost OEM systems that can only deliver 75 watts to the graphics card through the PCIe connector. I don't know how much of a problem that is anymore because even on the relatively inexpensive Dell desktops. They come with a, at least a six pin adapter. So maybe a six pin instead of an eight pin here might've been nice, but totally fine. For our connectors, we've got three DisplayPort and one HDMI. If you're a programmer that games occasionally and 1080p gaming will do it for you, this is a great card because you can rock a bunch of monitors, a bunch of 4K DisplayPort 1.4 monitors and still be able to game at $350 suggested end user pricing. Let's dive into the benchmarks and take a look. Just a quick disclaimer, the 6600 XT has improved since the 6600 XT review because of the driver, driver improvements. AMD is squeezing just as much as they possibly can out of the silicon. And it is kind of a drip feed of, you know, 6000 series GPUs, you know, the 68 and 69, and then the 67, and then the 66, and then the 66, the other 66, the 6600 XT, and then the 6600. I don't know if that's global supply issues or a strategy to keep you know, stuff in the press. I don't know. The availability of the 6600 XT was generally better than most other cards. The availability of say the 6900 XT has actually been pretty good, but that's probably because that's, you know, $1,500, $2,000 card at this point. These, yeah, I don't know. Is, does it make sense for you to stand in line at Micro Center 
Best Buy and things like that. That's a you decision. I don't know. If you get it for $350 in this market, that's not unreasonable. 1080p at 100 FPS plus. Well, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 84.5 FPS at 1440p. Again, because it can do 1080p at such a ridiculous resolution and because it's got eight gigs of VRAM, we can actually run 1440 in a lot of games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 84 FPS. That's perfectly reasonable. And that's on high. Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p, 129.1 FPS. <laughs> that is eminently playable. Our test system, by the way, is a Ryzen 5800X with 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z memory, running at 3600. Borderlands 3, AAA title from yesteryear. At 1440p, yeah, that's a 62.3 FPS or 98.3 FPS if you're rocking 1080p. Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 1440p, 77 FPS or 122 FPS at 1080p. And if you're into games like the new Evil Genius game or Sid Meier's Civilization or something like that, well, the Evil Genius game, 4K, 62 FPS, 4K on a 6600. This is currently the bottom of the stack for sixth generation from AMD and it's doing 4K over 60 FPS. If you're into games like Sid Meier's Civilization and Anno 1800 and strategy games like that, Stellaris, you can have a really amazing experience, 1080p, 1440p, maybe even 4K, depends on the game engine, with this card. It's kind of nuts. Esports titles, things like that, you know, ultra widescreen, 4K, probably gonna be playable on like medium high, high settings. If it's some sort of crazy parallel universe and you have a choice of both cards, if you're gonna save more than 50 bucks, I would probably go for the 6600 over the 6600 XT and then get another higher end card later when the supply chain improves. The supply chain would not actually improve until 2024. GPU reviews. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I, it's a weird situation. Buying cards is a weird situation. AMD and PowerColor sent me this one. I like what PowerColor is doing. I haven't reviewed a lot of PowerColor cards in the past, but the heatsink did its job. The fans are not super annoyingly loud. It is a true two slot card. I don't really have any complaints. I mean, it's a 6600. It's designed to be a lower cost card and lower cost has become $350, give or take. It is a little bit weird because in times gone by, this much of a percentage variation would be attributed to run to run variations and machine configuration differences and things like that. Not quite. It's close. It's not not quite, that's not quite true, but it's it's close to that, I think, because the performance between the 6600 and the 6600 XT in a lot of cases really is close. With ray tracing, when we're talking about ray tracing, you know, if we look at artificial benchmarks like the 3D Mark benchmark, you can make some of the differences between the cards bring them a little closer together, and some of the differences between the cards will actually spread things farther apart. So artificial benchmarks don't really tell you a lot. Subjectively playing the game, you're not gonna tell much of a difference between 100 FPS and 110 FPS with either one of these cards, or 120 FPS and 130 FPS for a roughly 10% difference. It's also unfortunate because if you've got a, an older GPU, like an NVIDIA 2060, there's no reason for you to upgrade you know, on this path because it's just not much of an upgrade for you. If you're rocking a nine series GPU or Polaris, I mean, this is $100 more than the 480, I think it was the RX 480, debuted at. And that was the four gig RX 480. I think the eight gig RX 480 was like $50 more. I don't really remember exactly, you know, engagement challenge, you can sort of figure that out. With the cost of everything going up and everything else like that, on the one hand, it's kind of impressive that this still has eight gigs of memory, faster, better, blah, blah, blah. And it's only $50 more despite all of the challenges of being able to do that. But on the other hand, is this the new normal? I don't know. It's, you can be a half, glass half full or a glass half empty. Uh, you know, you can have that kind of a read of the situation. But in terms of engineering and what AMD is doing to become a first class citizen with delivering GPUs, driver stability, and everything, they are on a tear. And that is good for consumers. So I don't know if we can hang in there and weather this thing out overall. I think it'll ultimately be good for gamers and enthusiasts. But hey, you know, what do I know? I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. If you pick up one of these or you do, you know, some of the day one launch things at Micro Center or Best Buy or whatever, tweet me pictures. I don't know. I'm signing out and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.
Ah, my car's extended auto warranty.